Hey folks, Nick here from another BookTube channel. Today, continuing the Swamp Thing read-along, the Swamp Thing number 61. We are, we're getting close to the end. It's the fourth to last issue. And uh, we're this is once again another one that's honestly a bit of a tough read. Uh, it, it's just like the previous issue, which was very uh, esoteric and uh, uh, interestingly written. <laughs> uh, I would say maybe uh, pretentious. Um, this one also can be a bit dense, a bit tough to parse, but it is a pretty decent story. I like what happens in this. Uh, I just feel like Alan Moore's writing is getting a, getting a little, um, a little too self-indulgent at this, at this stage. And that's a criticism people might even levy it more early on, but I think his writing early, uh, is a lot stronger than, uh, what he's doing to close out this issue. Um, first off, I, I love the cover by um, Stephen Bissett, where Swamp Thing's screaming, and his eyes have these little mouths. Very much a uh, Corinthian from Sandman type of imagery. And we can see he's got the Green Lantern ring on. So we're going to get some Green Lantern in this issue. I'm not a fan of Green Lantern. Uh, like, the Green Lantern core, any of those characters, don't know a lot about them. But I think it's used pretty well here. Uh, we are visiting a new planet, J586, and the way it begins is we just get a, a lay of the land. We meet a few of the residents here, including this couple, who are uh, obsessed with each other, and they're constantly you know, making out. You know, those people that you see in public that it's like, come on, this isn't the time for that. Um, we meet this artist who is perfect. <laughs> perfect kit like the the glass is like the one glass the hairstyle the necklace the dress like this is absolutely uh an artist it reads it, it's such a good design from rick beach um this artist is a little bit disillusioned doesn't like that uh gets gets annoyed at the the slobbering masses who try to ask her simple questions about her her incredible art um, and then we have a priest, a holy man, who's losing his faith, doesn't feel the conviction in the words anymore. And all, all the while we're, we're meeting them, we're also getting this, these introductions at the top about the horror that's coming to the planet. And that horror is going to be our guy, uh, or a swamp thing. But one last uh, person to meet, and that is the Green Lantern, Medphil. Medphil's, um, I guess, mentor has uh, a mentor Jothra has died recently and he feels a little bit lost without him. Very sad. Uh, and he does his little green lantern oath here, but doesn't feel a ton behind it. I'll read the oath to you in case you're a green lantern fan, because it's a, it's a different oath based on where they are and like what their race is. So uh, his oath is, in forest dark or glade be ferned, no blade of grass shall go unturned. Let those that have the daylight spurned tread not where this green lamp has burned. So that's that's his Green Lantern champ. Uh, meanwhile, the horror comes to J586. What happens is these, these characters we've met start to grow uh, suddenly, like appendages, like their limbs start to become branchy and they start... Com combining with other people that are around them. And the issue here is that Swamp Thing has placed his soul, his consciousness into the green of this planet. Unfortunately, on J586, the plant life was already sentient. So all of these people uh, are all are, are the plants. So he is <laughs> forming a, this is, and this is an incredible spread page forming his own massive body with all of their bodies. And with it, he's also um, getting their consciousness, but they're also kind of cross uh, crossing their own consciousnesses, consciousnesses. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to say there, but they're all kind of getting a glimpse into each other's heads as well. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, the name of the issue is all flesh is grass written by Alan Moore, art by Rick Veach and Alfredo Alcala. Uh, and I'll, I'll just linger on this really awesome 
spread page. One of the cool things about the new format, they, they switched over to that high quality paper. No ads, no ads to break up the story, which is really nice. All the ads are in the back of the book. Um, we continue and Swamp Thing is, uh, something is like screaming in, I don't know if it's agony or just like horror himself because he didn't realize what he was doing. So he's absorbed all of these sentient beings into himself and he's feeling all their feelings and seeing everything they see and thinking everything they think. And it's just a cacophony in his head. The few like uh, militaristic people who are behind who didn't get caught up in this swamp thing upswell, they're trying to fight, but like there's nothing that they can do because he's just, he's just made up of the citizens here. And this page is really cool. Uh, you have the benefit of, uh, seeing this on a screen, so you have no choice but to view the whole page as a whole. But when you're reading a comic in person, sometimes you can get tunnel vision and you can just go panel to panel and you can lose sight of the, uh, you know, not see the forest for the trees. So if you just go from here, you might go there and then there and then there and there and miss the fact that this whole page is Swamp Thing's face. <laughs> uh, I like how the artists like painting like the, the the frame is his lips and the the teeth are represented by trees that are in silhouette there's uh, stumps at the bottom here for the bottom row of teeth really clever this is great his little nose canopy is the mountain awesome clever design and swamp thing is by all appearances you know uh, he's being he's been introduced as a horror to these people um, and he's just causing mayhem while he's trying to kind of stop it. Uh, but they can't tell that. We get a really manic looking swamp thing there. Uh, and meanwhile, on the inside, like those lovers that we saw at the beginning, they're seeing into each other's minds and they're getting, you know, a little turned off by like, oh, that's what that's what you think of me. Like, oh, you think I'm I'm like too clingy. Like uh, the artist is uh, feeling. Uh, is like seeing all of her art like disappear feels like um, uh, that she's like in a prison with her art and to come to try to save everybody and break all this up is Medfill and uh, cool, you know, page layout. I like the, the tall vertical panels that all become like his tall vertical head <laughs> there. I like his hair being the plant life. He, uh, he starts, uh, using his ring to try to save the day. And what he does is he's trying to dismantle Swamp Thing. Basically, take him, take apart the components of him, which in this case are the sentient plant people. So he just starts systematically taking him apart, like from the top to the bottom. And the way he's doing that is he, he's like hypnotizing Swamp Thing to kind of stop him in place so that he stops causing a problem. And now the work can, can begin and we can see him lifting people off his head and dropping them safely until we get to the midsection, we get to the feet and then all that's left is Swamp Thing's soul, which is represented by this uh, weird pattern here. He captures the soul in a jar or a glass display and he's finally able to talk to Swamp Thing. They're able to communicate through the Green Lantern ring and Swamp Thing explains, this is all a misunderstanding. I didn't mean to cause these problems. I'm just trying to get home. I've been exiled from my home. My, my body's like frequency isn't compatible with Earth's vegetation anymore because of, you know, what happened to him back in issue 53. Um, uh, or 52? 53. I forget. Um, and so Medfil says, I, I can help you with that. Like, I can help rearrange your body frequency so you can be compatible with your home planet again. You can get the hell out of here and stop causing problems. Uh, Swamp Thing agrees. It's going to take a while, though. So in order to put Swamp Thing into a body, so he's not just a disembodied soul, he takes up the body of uh, Jothra, Jethro, Jeff Jothra, um, which gives Medfil a chance to kind of um, have some closure and say goodbye to his friend and just spend a little bit more time with him. Uh, but meanwhile, he's teaching Swamp Thing how to change his body frequency, how to get back to Earth. And that's where it ends up. Um, he, you know, Swamp Thing's ready to go, and he leaves Jothra's body behind um, for uh, for Medfil. And off he goes into the stars. We're back home. We're back on Earth. Swamp Thing's not there yet. 
Abby is hanging out with Chester, uh, smoking some pot. Uh, and there's a knock at the door, and it's Adam Strange. Adam Strange is going to deliver Swamp Thing's message from uh, that he from the previous issues from when he was on Ran. Uh, he introduces himself and says, "Hey, I, I, your your husband, Swamp Thing. He told me he's going to, you know, he's he's on his way home. He's going to be all right. He is all right. Uh, you'll see him soon." And she asked for details, and he was like, "Well, uh, I ran into him on the planet Ran, the Centauri system. Uh, he was heading to J five eighty six. Um, you know, I, I travel via a Zeta beam. I go back and forth between these planets. So obviously she thinks he's out of his freaking mind because Adam Strange isn't a super well-known superhero uh, to them. We know him because we're readers. You know, we have that meta aspect. She doesn't know Adam Strange. So she thinks this is just some lunatic. We do have a little humanoid looking plant monster there to, you know, a little something like, you know, he's coming soon. He's actually, you know, he, he'll be here soon. Don't worry. So yeah, she doesn't believe it. She's crying. And uh, that's where the issue ends. Uh, but we are getting much closer to Swamp Thing getting back home. The next issue is Wavelength. Can't close without looking at the pinups offered here. Pinup by Bill Sienkiewicz. That's great. That is so cool. I have a Bill Sienkiewicz Swamp Thing pinup. That thing is awesome. We also have one by Walt Simonson. It's a uh, kind of a where's Swamp Thing kind of because that's all you get from them. That little doo -doo right there. Everything else is just like a little Swampland. Uh, tableau but he also threw in a little you know some easter eggs i think uh you could like you could see a little bit of swamp thing's face there um you gotta get it there a little bit uh so you know you look hard enough you see swamp thing kind of everywhere um but that's it that's swamp thing 61 i breezed through that i only covered like the highlights of the story and it, i made it sound a lot simpler than it actually reads it can be, it is a bit of a tough read, honestly. I, I, I am not a fan of whatever Alan Moore is doing with his, uh, his sci-fi dialogue, his sci-fi writing can be a little bit too dense for me. It's not my favorite. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just definitely not for me. Comes across as a little self-indulgent. So not a huge fan, but you let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. Let me know if there's anything that I missed. We will be back next week with issue number 62. Thank you very much for spending some time with me today, but now it's time to get back to reading.